Good morning, everybody. I was a bad girl. I'm sorry. But the last video, I said, Oh, I have all my ones on spike on this side. And over here, I have the ones uh, not in spike. And a couple sad ones. And I'll show you them after. Of course, the video went on and it was getting late for lunch. And I didn't do it. So I'm back now. And the reason I picked today is it's halfway from when I watered, which was Wednesday. Today is Sunday. So it's a good time to check the small pots. If you're just getting a few, uh, just getting into it, you're getting new orchids, and you have to establish your watering schedule, it's always best to check the pot because otherwise it's guesswork. So today I have one, two, three, four, five, six, eight little orchids over here. Now um, <laughs> one of them is in spite, but I want to discuss and I'm going to turn the camera so we get a close-up of every one we're going to examine. Whoops, I forgot to get my scissors out because I probably need them and maybe even some little pliers. So I have some little pliers that I use to take the little uh, where the where the leaves come out and all those dry sheaths get stuck onto the onto the uh, stem. Let me see. Um, I learned this from one of our subscribers. <laughs> She's very good. She helps out on the comments too. So, uh, um, so along along the monopodial stem. What happens is, where the leaves dry up and fall off, it quite often leaves a little sheath. And if you have a sad orchid that just isn't getting roots, it is important to pull that off. Maybe on this one I can show you. In here, in here, and maybe when we unpot them we'll see better, in here, there's dry sheaths and if I pick at it it comes off and it's very hard to get it off and we'll, we'll look at that closer when we unpot them but uh, it's important um, uh, discussing why these ones are like this and checking the water so because these are all in small pots proving I do better with bigger pots. Why? Because the bigger pots hold the humidity better because all that I have in my pots is bark. And uh, that holds the humidity better where the small ones definitely dry out quicker. So they need uh, usually watering halfway through and I didn't start doing this till just lately because uh, I'm still learning too. So it's important. I'm going to show you what I do, but this is how often I'll say to you if you've got a problem or could check the pot. And often I say, before you water, check the pot. Now you don't have to take all the bark out. You can. You don't have to. You can shake as much out till you're at least three quarters of the way down and feel how that bark is. Because if it's still damp, you don't need to water. But if everything is dry, yes, they need water. And that's the only way that you're going to find out the best schedule for you, uh, your climate, in the home humidity. And uh, I just have uh, Phalaenopsis here. I have a few others um, I'm not doing today. It's just Phalaenopsis. So, uh, that's what I've had the most experience with because that's all we can get here. So we better get busy and I'm going to close the camera up close. And before I do that, I'll take these two. Now, this is my oldest orchid. Now, it's sad that she shrunk in size 
had troubles. Her stem got so long, I had it in a in a a long narrow pot. The stem was like so long because it had flowered over so many years. And I was procrastinating about cutting that stem off. There's not a lot about it on the internet. And uh, anyway, in the end, I did cut it off. And one portion had the leaves and a few roots. And one portion had no leaves and just roots. So we'll do that one first because at least we've saved her. And I, and I see th it's looking a lot better. So... Uh, we're going to do that one first, see how they look. And what I've got here is, I took one, one black tea bag, and you'll get a closer look when I do one cut, and put it in a bowl. I added hot water from the kettle, and then I added cold water. So uh, that's what they'll get their dip in if they're dry. And also because these are ones that are a little sad and it'll do them better than anything else so well maybe we'll just get started and I'll close up down here so that we can see what we're doing okay there that should be good okay so maybe we'll look at the mother plant first she is, she has some aerial roots out the pot. These are new. She was in very sad state. Now, I, I know and I've read everything on the internet. I know all the ways that you can put them. If they're suffering, you can put them in a, in a, I'll just talk while I do this. You can put them in a moist bag. You can put them in moss. You can do a lot of things. But when you put them in moss, you still have to come back to the, your potting method of choice, which with me, all there is in here now is bark. I've changed over the years, found no difference. So we're going to go down into the bottom. I'm not going to pull it out and disturb it because this one is attached and they they like being attached to their pot but I have seen all the methods for saving plants and the why I do this way and there I know all the controversy um, why I do this way is because this is the, my this is the choice I want now okay I'm going to show you in here It's what it looks inside. It's got new roots, but it is dry as a bone. Now, do you notice the color? The color, even though it's dry as a bone, the color is pretty good. But yes, when do they need water? They need water when they're dry. This is all dry. So I can feel a coolness. So you know, it, it, you can tell as you get to the bottom, you feel coolness, but definitely not wet. So it definitely needs something. So what I'm going to do with the, each one that needs it is I have some black tea, warm water, lukewarm. Let me check. Should be a little cooler than a, than a baby's bottle. It's a long time since I made up one of them. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take her, rather than disturb her, I'm going to put her in the tea soap for a while. So um, I can probably put the bark back in. I've seen that, yes, halfway through this small pot, it needs water. Now when I put it in here, it was... Uh, not many roots. It's growing new. It was just suffering. It was had that long stem. It just was suffering. And of course, this is one that um, isn't in spite. And and I don't really want it to be in spite. I'm hoping the leaves get bigger and bigger come the next growing season. 
And this is where I, I want to say uh, roots. I've read this on some orchid societies. Roots that are grown in bark and aerial roots are much hardier roots. They can withstand a longer time without water because they've grown accustomed to this media. And that is why I don't, uh, baby, I try and it's, I've done it. But this is my method of choice. I put it back in the bark. I check the bark to make sure how it is doing. And that's my method of choice and that's the method I want them to be used to. So we're going to put it in the black tea solution because watering day isn't till Wednesday or Thursday. And I'm just going to put it so it's reaching the top surface. Now the other ones only get watered once a week. There. Okay, let's put that one over there. We'll let it soak till we look at the baby. So, here's the baby. She's also in a small pot. So, I, but, I have her in a small pot, but I've had her enclosed in another pot with no air holes. So I had her inside another pot. When you put, now if you have problems with uh, too dry, when you take your pot and you put it in another pot, it will help hold the humidity in. So that's one reason I did it, because she had no leaves when I cut her off. That is where I cut her. She had no leaves. And some of the old, uh, probably burnt old roots, they are still good. They might not look nicer from years ago because roots can come off of them. So um, I don't see anything coming out here. So I think, I think what we'll do is I'm, po I'm potter. Okay, now let's, let's look at the root system first. Okay, they're, okay, the only, you see these may, you may, they're probably old, 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 and they've been burnt, they're brown. But they are firm and hard, and they can still do some good. Now we have these roots here, these green ones, they're the best ones. And the growing season is next spring. So even though there was no leaves on this, it has, it has grown three little leaves and I have, I have hopes. So, the pot is dry, but because it was enclosed in another pot, these are quite damp. These are definitely quite damp. So, um, does it need water? Uh, I'm going to only give the plant a dip in the iced tea because the top is dry and I put, you can see this is my old bark that I used to have. It was large uh, Rexius fir bark and I left some in there because she was a baby. She had no leaves and you get uh, uh, bacteria that is also good on these barks. And I wanted her to still feel at home when she was separated with no leaves. So I'm not going to water this. It is damp. Why? The pots are similar in size because it was in another pot. So if you have dryness and you don't want to start adding moss, although you can. I have nothing against some moss. I just don't like to use it. So um, what I... What I'd like to do with her is put her just in the water how she is, okay? And we'll give her a good soak. And I'm going to take this bark for now and put it back in the pot. So I'm not soaking the bark again, but I am giving her a bit of a drink. And this is the, I only do this with my small pots, but I, I know I often say, you know, check the pot, check the bark. But really, I've done it for whenever I have a new one. So, 
Okay, let's put that over there. Now, which one should we check? Um, this one. Now, here's a little one that um, it has some nice roots. It has fairly nice leaves. It's slowly been coming along and it is shooting out, even though it's not the growing season, it's shooting out another nice new root. Now that's what I like to see. This one is probably a year ahead. <laughs> that's what I mean by patience. This one's a year ahead of the others. Now let's see. And it has not been in another pot. It's just been on the shelf how it is. So, one thing about bark, if you don't want to disturb your plant too much, and it is attached and used to being how it is, you can get a long way by just shaking it out. Okay, um, I'm going to water it, but there is a slight damp feeling. Now, it is a little bit bigger than this pot, maybe. Not much. No, it's about the same size. So anyway, uh, let's have a look at the root system. Okay, I think we can do that. Let's dump all the bark out. Oh, we even see a bit of moisture in the very bottom. I don't know if you can pick up on that. Okay, and we also have some damp ones. Even though there's holes in the bottom, and it's been on its own little saucer, there is some water in the bottom. Now that is adding humidity to the pot. And uh, am I going to water it? Hmm. I will probably give it a quick in and out dip. That is all. And probably, let's see. Now the roots, lots of nice green ones coming. So yeah, it took a while but uh, it's coming along. So I'm going to put that bark back in and line it up for a dip. <laughs> so, you know, uh, watering day, you don't have to do this. Halfway to watering day, especially if you're new to orchids, <clears throat> and if they're in a big pot. If they're, they're in a big pot, you're not too sure. If you see signs of the leaves going limp, I've learned this over time. And you know, it, it's uh, <coughs> too bad there's some, that there's some bad information out there. Because when I first started with orchids, and I started with bot media bark, but it had no moss, but it was uh, uh, just stuff you buy in the store, Pro Mix or whatever different ones, miracle Grow. Um, I started with. And uh, so I never had the moss, but I just found that the other stuff just, it was too powdery, it made it decay too fast. And uh, it was a good mix, and, and but when I got more orchids, I switched to bark because you can't buy it just go buy a little bag here. <laughs> so I ordered the big bag of Rexia Spark. So there we are. She is ready for a little dip. She doesn't need a long dip. But these roots are hardier and because you check, you know. You look for, <clears throat> if the leaves are getting limp, you'll say either her roots are no good and she can't absorb the water or it's too dry. Others, if, you're, if your aerial roots are all shriveled, it's probably too dry. So then you have to consider putting it in another pot, inside another pot, or uh, misting, getting a humidifier. I like the cool mist. You'll see them on the tour. So let's line that one up over here because you know how it looks to soak. So we'll line that up over there. And I think this one has had long enough. So I'll take it out and I'll drain it in the sink. <clears throat> now, 
it's going to get that and then Wednesday's water day too because we know that one's drying out. Now, <clears throat> this one, I am not touching her because it's a miracle she's even surviving. Um, she might not watering day, she might not get a full soak of water, she might just get another bath. <laughs> You have to play it by ear. And I put her in high. So, <clears throat> there we go. I, I like to keep them high so water doesn't sit around the crown. Sometimes people say, oh, you've got water droplets on your orchids. And I, I often, in the, in the summer, I don't worry with the fan. In the summer, they dry quickly. In the winter, I turn the house fan off. On and I only water in the mornings. I mostly wipe it out. I've never ever had had uh, crown rot, but I plant them high and uh, There let's put that one there for me. I might have to retouch. Okay <clears throat> Here we are with another one all the ones that are uh, Debatable about watering for me are only in the small pots so this one has one, two, four leaves. This one I've been kind of watching for. It's probably its second year too. It's just one that suffered. You can tell some of this. This is my older bark. And one thing about uh, just the bark is, and the water drains so quick. The media does not deteriorate that fast. I have gone three, even four years because it just because it's not staying wet a long time. So this one is dry. Now this pot is small. It has lots of holes. I'm going to show you in there. But look, she's slowly adjusting. Now she'll get a quick dip because she is very dry, but she has really good root system. And that's one reason, because it's a small pot, that I don't mind that extra watering day. A big pot, I would hesitate and, and, with me and look for other, other ways to solve the problem. And newly potted, newly potted orchids, because the bark, the bark doesn't start to do its job right away, newly potted orchids, may need this same treatment. They, they, if they've had root troubles and uh, they may not even be absorbing the nutrients, so they're probably better off with a black tea, with maybe a little cow in, and don't overdo it. All my, on my watering schedule, I go with one quarter. I go with one quarter of what's recommended because and then it's spread out over my watering schedule. I'm not giving the same thing every week. I'm changing it. So um, we're going to sit that one in the tea for a few minutes. Okay, we've only got a couple left. The bad one I'll save the last. Okay, this is the little baby I did show in the spikes section when I did the spikes because Believe it or not, she's got a spike. And this is the one I said, I don't know, I probably will cut it off. <laughs> a growing spike takes energy away from the plant. It's trying to do it because it's a survival. It's its method of surviving. But it takes energy away from the pot. Oh, this one, see, this is why you have to check. You just don't know. This one, and you can tell by the color, it's actually quite damp. I do not have to water this one. I could, I could give her a little, a little dip, just because when they are in spike or flower, they need a little extra moisture to carry out that process, because it's taking energy away from the plant to do that. So, uh, there's, a, there's one I can just take off. Do you see that? It's not soggy because I don't get soggy in my media. But it is, it is um, dry. 
Okay, so we're getting some new roots, but really, I don't think I should let this one spike. It's trying to. I'm just going to leave it for now, but it's still, it's, it's had a rough go of it. But it's coming. It's coming. So, um, maybe a little dip in the, in the corner. There we go. A little dip in the tea. This one can come out and go over here. There. The little baby can go over here. And that one's done. So we're doing good. Um, let's, um, we'll put her back in. We'll just give her a few minutes in here. And I'll just, um, this is old bark too. This is, this is, uh, Okay, it's still damp, and I notice a slight smell. I'm not worried about that smell, but it's because this one hasn't dried. And why, I don't know. Why one dries before another? <laughs> Maybe the plants, how much energy it takes. Or it's older. Probably there's some older ones. That's probably more the, more the thing. So come spring, any that need repotted for the growing season, that's when I do it. Come spring, that's when I do it. And I know they tell you if you buy an orchid, um, you'll lose the bloom. I, I've lost next to nothing in the way it blooms on repots. I do right away. So um, that one's going to go back in here in a minute. And I think I should put the bark on the top just to get it out the way. So in the spring, this will be on the list of ones that will get nice new bark and go out in the patio for growth, growth, growth. So here we are. This one I got last summer. Remember Jack made this pot. And, uh, there we are. and I put the two orchids in it. And they are struggling, so um, we're going to look at them. Now this is not really what I call a small pot, and this, this is my only orchid that is like this. I want you to see it. I am not panicking. Uh, this one's not as bad. The leaves are firm, it grew leaf, it's small. Often when they go a shock, uh, because maybe it was real bad roots when you got it and then you change the media. They go through a shock and often you'll get a small leaf. But next spring, these will both pick up. So first maybe we'll look at this one. <laughs> it's not in much, but I just want to see what we got. Okay, down deep, there's, there's some moisture down here. It's not soaking wet. But it's damp, and I, I think you can even almost see that. So what that dampness will actually, the roots will say, oh, there's dampness down there, I'm going to grow. That's why I often mist my pots on the bottom area, so that it's, the roots are saying, oh, there's humidity down there. So um, I'm just going to pull this one out, let it sit over here. I'll do that after. And okay, let's have a look at it. I see no real green roots. I'll, oh, yeah, we do. This is the one, this is an aerial root. And why do I always say when you're looking for an orchid, look for ones with aerial roots? Why? It might be the difference between life and death of your orchid. So, it has one aerial root, and I think when I bought these, I broke that rule because I took what I found that day. But uh, there's nothing rotten because it is, but I'm not taking, there's nothing. If you squeeze them and they're not firm, see these are firm. Now if you squeeze them and you go right through into the, you got to cut that off. So am I going to add any more moisture to this? No, I don't think so. I might, just for the top, I might just 
take the top handful, put it in the tea for a minute, and put it on the top. Because why? We know the top dries out fastest. I'm going to give it a tiny little dip because watering day is Wednesday. But this one is looking a lot better than the other one. And I am not going to change media and say, oh my God, this is killing it. I'm not going to panic. I'm going to be patient and I'm going to wait because I've done enough of these that I know that patience pays off. <laughs> so there, I'm just wetting these top ones because it was damp in the bottom. I am not watering the whole thing because as this gets together because it's a sewer pot it holds more moisture down at the bottom because it's thicker so I want to put a little bit of orchid in there there now I even thought I should have ran a wire across here, but then I want to look at it once in a while and I'd have to undo the wire just to hold her up there because Phalaenopsis are happy when they can cling. And if they can't cling, but they like to hold on to something because that's what they do in the woods. And when I get ones that start clinging, yeah, I know, hopefully, you see, with just the bark and moss, I don't have to worry about taking them right out of the pots. You see, I did, but I really didn't have to. But the only reason I did is I want to show you it pays to check. It pays to check, especially if you're new, you're not too sure if you should water or not. The only way to really tell Unless, of course, you have see-through pots, plastic pots. But I like playing with pots. I like the heavier porcelain pots. So this one, this one is going to be fine. Its leaves are firm, even though it took a shock and grew a small leaf. The other leaves weren't real big. This is the one that took a shock. So it did grow a new leaf, but it was small. Let's see if I can move this up a bit. There. It did grow a new leaf, but it was small. So let's see what's in here. Let's just take it out. I don't know what that is. Okay, I see roots from the other plant. Okay, same thing. I'll probably just, it feels damp down there. I can stick my finger. It's not bone dry down there. And watering day is Wednesday. So let's see what we got. Look at this. What have we got? One new root. Yay! And another one tucked in here. So, is it going to recoup? And I want to show you something else. This root is dry. But right now, it's sprouting another root. So, I don't take them off if they're dry. I, I leave them and when I got lots of roots, if I want to clean it up better, fine. Now here, this is what I was talking about. Oh, was it Barbara? Barb? If it was you, thank you for this tip. This is what is left of the leaf. The leaf falls off, but it leaves this sheath very close to the plant. And if you're trying to get roots, if you take these off, it's way easier for those roots to come out. And not only that, the other thing I discovered, in fact, she told me that when I cut my baby off of the mother, she told me to do that. So the only person I know that told me to do that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And if I got the name wrong, I'm sorry, but I know you've been watching a long time. But here's another reason. It can get quite black. In inside there. <clears throat> so I have this little pair of uh, pliers. Um, and what I do, and it's hard. Look at this. See? It's hard. So I've started, 
I have started going back and making sure that these are out of there. The other thing that causes a big problem is make sure you get all the all the moss. See how black that is on the end? Because moisture can hang in there. And uh, there's one more here. I should pull that one off. And there is roots trying to come. So uh, these real dry roots, I may take off at some time. But I won't take them off until I think this plant is very happy. There's lots of time. As long as they're not mucky, I would never leave mucky there. So now, see these little roots that are coming? They're going to have an easier time. So yes, I know it looks sad, and some of you, 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 you get in touch with me, and you, you explain them, and they probably look just like this one. So we're going to give it a dip because that is good. Now these roots, here's the other thing. On your normal fertilizer, these roots are not ready for normal fertilizer. When you've got a sad orchid, sad roots, I would stick to cow mag, seaweed extract, black tea. Alternate, uh, put the cow mag, I have found that's a real gift for orchids. Don't go crazy with it. I use a quarter a teaspoon to a gallon. And uh, stick to uh, the cow mag and black tea, cow mag and seaweed extract. Because really any other fertilizer is going to do more harm and good to those new baby roots coming. So that's my little lecture on that. So, what I'm going to do is it had a little dip. And these ones, they get special treatment for a while. And so, what I'll do, because the taut ones, I will put a little bit in the tea. Put them back. Now, see, I know it looks terrible, but I don't give up easy. <laughs> I don't give up easy on, on anything. Unless, unless it's something awful in your life and it's doing you nothing but harm, then, hey, then that's a different story. Yeah. Nobody needs that. So, and also watch because when an orchid is uh, sad, having trouble coping, you, um, that's when you have to also look for bugs, like scale or something. So, um, anyway, I feel good. I know she looks terrible. I have her not in dark, not in dark, but she's not as close to the windows as the others. I'll show you where she sits when, when I do the or little tour through the windows. I'll show you where she sits, and, and you'll see she's not in dark. They still need light, but uh, there. So because this pot is thicker at the bottom, it's sort of different. So it's holding dampness down there. Dampness encourages roots to grow, but you do not want wet. And you do not want dampness on watering day. You want dryness. You want it to just be going dry. You might feel cool. So, um, there we go. We're doing good. I thought I might use that strainer, but I didn't. So, I'll put this one back in here. Now, watering day, this does not get my normal routine. This is a cl sad class, and it will get what I just suggested. So the only other small orchid I have is, this is a little uh, traffic cone that I painted. It's from the Dollar Tree. It has the little holes. You could hang these too. Now this is my only little species fell. I got it from uh, uh, the coast. They, didn't own, they mostly had... Uh, slipper orchids, but they had this one fell, but when I got her, I had trouble with her 
Fal Memoria Retic. Now, uh, Here But Not also had this particular orchid and had trouble with his. And it took me a while to find out that this orchid does not like too much light. Probably why they had it, because it grows like a slipper orchid. And it took me a while to get that all figured out. But no, she doesn't have a spike. But she is, she is getting healthier than she was. I'm just taking some top bark off to see how she, I haven't looked in here in ages. But the root system is looking good. You can see. It has taken me a while. She suffered. She doesn't want any, uh, any direct light of any kind. She wants to be just around the corner, and I'll show you where she sits. And I don't have many species because we never get them here. My, my big complaint that I hope I can solve. Um, but because the top dries quick, I'll put a little bit. That, that won't hurt her. I'll put a little bit on the top. Because in the winter we have our furnace on, the air is drier. Now if it rains or snows outside, I'll open the window crack and let some of that humidity in the house. Along with my humidifiers. So that is it. So... <laughs> so I'm going to take you for a little tour. I'm going to clean this mess up after. I'm sorry I forgot to show you these, so it's been on my mind. Uh, and so now I'm going to take you to the window, show you where some of these were, and uh, uh, let you see how it's looking, how the spikes are growing, and what I do. And also, uh, email me with any problems you have with your orchids. I'm not... Uh, I'm not the be-all and the end-all. <laughs> I look at so many other orchid channels. I always do. Um, I guess I like Miss Orchid Girl. I like her because when I first started with orchids, she was one of the few that I went to and I wasn't around. But I go everywhere. I know about water culture. I know all that. But this is how I grow mine where we live and what works for me and so let's go have a look at them in the window okay so here here's what mess i'll have to clean up oh, they're all happy it's nice to just take a day and have a look at them and make sure so I'll just show you, you know, you know the routine. The spike, I haven't, I still haven't, I haven't attached the spike to the stake yet. I'm letting it get bigger. This one I'm going to attach, the other big one I'm going to let hang. I'm going to do kind of a choice. So, uh, yes, it's dry on the top, but, oh. Uh, this is a painted one. <laughs> this is a real one. Let's see if we can get there. It takes a camera a few minutes to adjust. So, this is the Cymbidians I brought in from the greenhouse. They smell lovely. And then my little hanging one. You see how it's growing towards the sunlight? I'm letting that just do that. Okay, Moon Glow, she sits here on the little shelf we put in front of the window because that way I can back some off before I put them out in the spring when some days are hot. And you can see how we made our shelf, I think. <laughs> Touch this one. All these are healthy. They're just the bigger pot is much better for me. Um, OK. 
Okay. As soon as I get near the window with the light coming in, it gets quite dark. Now this, this is a planter. It's very old. This is all copper. And this is came attached up here. It's very old. It was at a sale at the church store. No, it's filthy, just filthy. And we got it for like nothing. And I, I love it, but I don't put anything inside of it because it is very old and it's in such good shape. And of course, here, this one's waiting. <laughs> it's waiting. Okay. My rabbit's foot fern still losing some leaves, but still getting some. So hanging in there. And there's this little bit of humidity that I for that and the little prayer plant which is coming along in here. It's got some new leaves coming and we'll just go to the orchids. Oop, oop, next room. It was red sky this morning. So here I have my fish. And the midi comes out and down for these ones. My slipper orchids, one is doing really good finally. The other one still struggling. But they're to the back. And this is where my species, my small species sits. It gets a little bit of light, but it sits to the back corner here. This one's coming in bloom. These are ones I'm still waiting for something to happen. I haven't attached this bike yet. The other one. This one I moved from a small pot to a bigger pot, so it's it's acclimatizing. These are dry on the top, but of course they've got further to go, and they they have <laughs> this. <laughs> I don't cut them. What they do, they do. So, so you can tell they start to get a little drier looking when it's getting close to watering day. Now. This is where the sewer pot one sits. And of course the sun is coming from an angle in here, so it's not getting any direct sun. But these are actually where I put the ones I'm nursing. It's kind of my nursing table. And so the mist falls gently around to them all. And uh, this one's okay. It's got lots of leaves. It's got healthy looking roots in there. So even though it's in a small pot, it didn't make special treatment today. So anyway, this is how it looks. And uh, I'm going to leave you there. Thanks for joining me and have a great day.